All right, well, it is that time. So welcome everyone to the Milea Photos Coffee Break. I'm Angela Andrew. And today we're gonna to be talking about annotations and some of the different icons in Milea Photos that you might see on top of your folders or your different pictures. Let me jump in by sharing my screen. And I'm gonna walk you through how to control these, how you can decide what you wanna see and demystify what some of these things mean. Because if you're not used to seeing these things on your pictures, you might wonder, what the heck is this? It's annoying and distracting, how do I get rid of it? Or, oh, now that I know what that means, that's actually pretty helpful. So I have a few photos here up on the screen um, from my recent trip to New York. I was there speaking at a conference and took a little bit of time to get out and explore. And you'll notice here, this one image has a little flag. And that means I've added a pic flag. So that's one of the many annotations you're gonna see in Mylio photos. If I go ahead and scroll up a bit more here, we'll find some that I have rejected. Uh, so here's a couple more pics. This one here, this little pin here, this means that it has GPS information. So intermixed in with things from my little Sony point and shoot camera, which does not have GPS. These ones are from my phone. So if I go ahead and click on one of these images, you'll see that's from my iPhone 14. So that means this particular image has GPS information. We go ahead and scroll down a little bit more. I know I have several here that I've marked as rejects because they were just blurry or just unnecessarily make sure I'm showing my rejects. Let's see, show rejected photos is on. So if I scroll down, I will find some of them. I know they're in here, but it'll be very similar to the pick flag, but it'll show the little X that's similar to this guy here, this flag. And so these are just indications of different things about your photos. And you can decide whether you wanna see these on your photos or not. So you can just go up here to the more menu in the upper right, go down to annotations. And right now you'll notice I'm in the all photos view and from different views, you're gonna have different annotations available. So in all photos, let's go ahead and click on that. And you'll see that we have several options here for the different annotations and icons that can be made available on top of our photos. And also one thing to note is if you have the grid really, really small, you're looking at this on a tiny screen, like on your phone, Sometimes those annotations get hidden just because there's not enough screen real estate. So if you have it on, but you're not seeing that annotation, you know it should be there, try making the grid a little bit bigger. But we have the options to have our ratings, color labels, and flags. I have that one turned on. You can also have the title turned on. So if you've added title and caption information to your photos, you can have that overlay on top of the images. I find that to be a little bit messy, but some people really like it. You also can have the date. Um, I have everything in here by date, and if I want to know the date, I'll pop open the info panel. But if you want to see that, you can go ahead and have that there. Fuzzy date is a one that usually throws people off, so I do have that turned on. And what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to just scroll down to the bottom of my library and find some things that I've captured that have this little equivalency symbol on them. What that means is that it's marked as undated or has a fuzzy date, a non-specific date. So anytime in My Leo Photos, you go into the date created and you choose something other than a timestamp. So a timestamp is your year, month, day, and down to the seconds. If you choose anything else that's considered a non-specific date, you're gonna have this little symbol here showing that it's what we call a fuzzy date or a non-specific date. So if you see that pop up in your pictures, that's what that indicates. If you don't want to see that, you can always go back up here, up at annotations, and you can turn off show fuzzy date. So you'll see how that just went on and off. We talked a little bit about the GPS already. So here's one that has GPS coordinates right here. I can decide whether or not I want to see those. So again, go into annotation and turn on or off that GPS. And then showing unsupported files. So what that what that means is if Mylio Photos can see that there's a file, it can synchronize that file, but it can't parse that file, meaning it can't display it, it'll show a little box with a little flower in it instead. If you turn this off, Mylio is just going to hide those. So that's something to be aware of. And these are the annotations that you have available to you in the All Photos view or in just about any grid that you're looking at with your pictures in this view. So if you go ahead and click into an album, and you're viewing all the pictures or a folder, you're gonna have all of these same annotation options. Let's go ahead and jump over to our people view and take a look at some of the annotations here. So some of these can be controlled, some of them can't. One thing you wanna note here is up in the upper left corner, that's gonna be the number of pictures you have tagged with that person. 
Sometimes you might also see a question mark and another number. And that means Mylio has auto tagged or found faces that are similar, but that you need to confirm that they belong to that person. But it's gonna go ahead and group them together. So if you click on that person, you'll still be able to see all of those images. It's also going to have their name, a little icon here saying that this is a person. And then up here in the upper right corner, you have the option of choosing categories. And you can categorize this person. So Alexander is one of my work friends. So I have him classified under work. Um, I have here my great, great grandfather or my great, great grandfather, not great, great. And if I click on this, I have him here categorized as family. Same with my cousin here. And you can go through and mark these into different categories. You can even go into custom and add custom categories or one of your other chosen categories there. All right. So those are your options that you have in people view. And then if I go into those people, again, you're going to see some of those other annotations we talked about in all photos, like these ones have GPS coordinates, these ones have fuzzy dates, and so forth. Let's go ahead and jump over to albums. And we've got some other similar stuff over here. So again, we have in the upper right corner our tap to categorize. So again, you can choose the different categories you want to assign to a given album. And then over here in the left corner, you have 30, a little symbol, and two. What this means is that inside this album, there's 30 images. And then there's also this little album means that there's two sub albums. So you'll notice here on this one, there's only eight images in there. This one has 30 images amongst two sub albums. So if I go and click into that, you'll notice I have a raw and an edited version. These are two separate sub albums. And that's what's indicated. And you can see that the numbers here inside of each indicate how many pictures are inside each album. So you have your title, again, a little symbol here that indicates that it's an album and the dates for the albums and so forth. Our options here are more, much more limited. And all you can do here is turn on or off tap to categorize. And this is on by default. And I think it's very, very helpful, especially now that we have spaces. This helps us assign things to certain spaces very, very easily. So I do recommend leaving it on, but if you don't like to use categories, you don't wanna use spaces, you feel free to turn that off. All right, let's go ahead and jump over to our folders view. And this is gonna look very similar at this point. So again, we're gonna see that this particular folder, my Apple Photos folder has 6,066 images with nine subfolders. And then over here on the right, we have two icons. So the one here on the left, again, is our tap to categorize. And this is where we can add categories to a specific folder and all of its subfolders. And then we also have tap to sync. Now this is one that works kind of like, if you use something like Dropbox or iCloud and you have the option to select a folder and say, hey, I want this to be available offline, which means it stores it locally in your computer or your phone or your tablet. That is what this does. So. By default, my Leo Photos is using its space saver sync policy for most devices, meaning it's managing your space and you're gonna have either some combination of thumbnails or optimized images to browse on that device if you're offline. If you know you're gonna to need to be working on those high resolution, high quality files, this is what you need to do. You just click on this icon and say store optimized files locally. And you'll see it's gonna take up an additional three point three and a half gigabytes of space on my hard drive and then I can have all of those high resolution files, or in this case, the optimized or almost 80 gigs to store the originals. So you can change this on the fly per folder. So that's what these two icons here mean. And again, if you go up here to the more menu in the upper right and click on annotation, you have the option to turn on or off, tap to categorize and tap to sync. Now, one thing to note, tap to sync is only gonna be available for my Leo Photos Plus subscribers. Tap to categorize works for everybody, whether you're on the free or the paid version. A um, couple other things, we've got our little folder icon here. We have dates, the names, and so forth. And that pretty much sums up what those little annotations mean and what you can do with them. They're very helpful to be able to see what's in your library at a glance, but you can control what you see. And if you feel that it's cluttered, you can turn some of them off. I do personally recommend leaving tap to categorize and tap to sync on. I think that they're incredibly useful, but if you don't wanna use those features, you don't have to, and you can always hide them. And there's other ways to access them within the app. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and open up the floor here to questions and see what we've got going on here. 
So I'm going to take a glance here. Thank you, Lori, for posting the list of annotations. Um, are GIFs an unsupported file type? I believe GIFs might be supported. Yes, Lori looked it up. Thank you. Yep. Um, I think but you might have to click the little play button at the bottom or open them in a reader on your computer or your device, something that can read them. Um, but it should, you should be able to play it. So like I know with like live photos from an iPhone. So if you do that live photo mode, basically saves it as, as a little mini, mini video. So that's how that kind of thing usually works. All right. Can I quickly reshow how to enable click to categorize on image titles? So, okay, click to categorize is gonna be available on your people, your albums and your folders. And that's gonna be the little icon here on the left. That's your, your click to, your tap to categorize is what we call it. And so you can get to it here in the folders view. It'll be here in our albums view. And it's here, if I go ahead and go back up to the top level people view, it's right here in people view. Now, if you want to categorize individual images, all you need to do is right click on that image and say add category. And that brings up your full category list and you can do that that way. Now, if you want to um, have your image titles hiding or showing, let's go ahead and do that really quick. Again, I'm here in the all photos view. This can be done from any of the grid views. So when you're viewing all of your photos, regardless of the grouping in a grid, you can go up to the more menu and choose annotation here. Let me go ahead and get the zoom window out of the way. And here I can just turn on show title and show caption. Now, if you have not added a custom title, what it's gonna do is show your file name. If I go into this picture here, for instance, and I just say red motorcycle, it's gonna go ahead and update that with the title instead of the file name. So that's one thing to note. All right, any other questions? And feel free to unmute and ask as well. All right, well, I think that's all we had to cover today. It's a very short and sweet topic, but it's one that we get a lot of questions about, especially this one with the fuzzy dates, that little equivalency symbol tends to throw people off and they wonder what it is that they're looking at. So hopefully this demystified some of the icons and annotations in Milea photos. If you have any other questions, please feel free to message me in the community. I always love hearing from each and every one of you. And if you have uh, suggestions for things that you'd like to learn more about in a future coffee break, let me know. Always looking for new topics. Uh, glad you learned something, Steve. I'm glad it was helpful. I wanna wish you guys a wonderful rest of your week and we will see you next time. Bye everyone.